Hey all, and welcome to another edition of Gifted Monkey TV, all things toy and toy related. I'm your host, Jordan Preston. When we come back, we're going to take a look at a one-fourth scale action figure from the guys over at NECA, a feline figure that's sure to be a perfect addition to your Batman collection. Respect the monkey! Alright guys, and we are back. Let's keep them with the promise of the awesomeness. Here we are. The NECA 1 4 scale, aka about 19 inches, action figure of Catwoman, aka Michelle Pfeiffer, from the movie Batman Returns, 1992. This is really great. This is a great looking figure. I've already had it out the box, full disclosure, and it's fantastic. But I put it back in for you guys so you can see a nice presentation of how it looks. This is just a fantastic presentation all the way around. The box, the figure, the accessories, we're getting all that stuff as we go along. But first, let's take a look at this box. This box is just so simple yet very nice. NECA has just been do going full bore and just doing such a bang up great job on their one fourth scale figures. For those of you who are new to the game of NECA and or one fourth scale figures, NECA is an is a actual uh, company that has been doing action figures for years, but they usually do six inch scale action figures, seven, eight inch scale action figures in that line of basic properties, uh, Evil Dead, Aliens, Predator, some superhero properties and things like that, popular pop culture properties. And in the last three years or so, as of about 2000, 15 or so, they started doing one fourth scale 19 inch figures uh, of, of superhero properties. And they started out with, I think, the Marvel edition of Captain America and Iron Man, and then went on to Thor and all those other things. And they just got better and better with each consecutive year. And of, about two years ago, they started doing the Batman from the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman movie and Batman Returns properties. They did the Penguin a few years ago, like about maybe a year and a half ago, they did the Penguin, Danny DeVito Penguin, which if you look up down and scroll down on my review shows, you'll see a review on that Danny DeVito Penguin. And then later they did another Danny DeVito in a mayoral outfit that was also featured in that hit movie. And then they finally got around to doing Michelle Pfeiffer as an action figure. Now this is great because it's the only Michelle Pfeiffer action figure that exists, actually, that looks, that is supposed to look like Michelle Pfeiffer. Not only, that's not the only Catwoman or the only Catwoman figure from 1992, but it's the only Michelle Pfeiffer look-alike action figure that's, that we've had so far. So this is really a milestone for us collectors. But we look at the box, it's really fantastic. If you remember, 1992's Batman Returns was a hit film starring Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, and Michelle Pfeiffer as Batwoman. I mean, as Catwoman, sorry. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, and uh, Christopher Walken as uh, Jonathan Shrek, which was the owner of a, a big conglomerate of department stores. Um, and they also did an origin story of Catwoman inside that movie. The, most of the movie took place during Christmas time in Gotham City, so it was very snow laden on the ground and rooftops. And so they put frost and snow around the box. That's a nice little touch that they did. Now you can't scratch on that snow, it's somehow uh, stenciled in. But so it's not rough and it's not on top of the plastic, it's actually in the paint of the, the embedded in the plastic. They got cat claw scratches right there, down there with a nice frost laden uh, look and the emblem of Batman. This is Batman Returns. Very nice. And you get to see Catwoman and her two head display right there. You turn to the side, it shows the actual figure again of Michelle Pfeiffer, aka Catwoman. And it says a lifelike, uh, lifelike portrait of Michelle Pfeiffer. Shows you the accessories that come with it. And then again, it shows you a full length view of Michelle Pfeiffer, the action figure. On the back, it says Batman Returns. It has two quotes that she did. I am Catwoman, hear me roar. That's what she said during the course of the movie when she first showed up as Catwoman in her Catwoman garb. That was what she said after she finished flipping and landed in front of Batman. She said that. And that was very nice. And here we are. That's the actual action figure. Nice logo again of the Batman in the back. Tells you the accessories, a little uh, history of the movie. 1992 Batman Returns movie. You guys can freeze that and look at it if you want. On the side they give you another look at the Michelle Pfeiffer figure. 
And on the top, they give you this nice little kitty cat. This was a, this was a logo that appeared in the movie once or twice. Uh, it gives you a nice little kitty cat uh, uh, fun logo. That was nice that they could do that. You can cut that out and actually put, find a way to feature that on your display if you'd like. And on the bottom, it has just more Batman and DC uh, and NECA Indicia, all the stuff, people, great folks that brought you this figure. So there we go. That's the box. Let's crack her open and take a look at the accessories. Catwoman didn't come with a lot of accessories, but she came with some really, really nifty ones. Everything essential for what you expect for a Catwoman, or would hope for from a Catwoman figure from the Batman Returns movie. Let's start out with the fingers. If you look at the hands, you come with an open hand. You come up with uh, two sets of hands. You got an open hand, but look at the detailing on that glove. Nice. And in the movie, Catwoman's, all her stuff was homemade. She was a seamstress at home. That was her hobby. And when she went deranged, she took all of her th uh, thimbles and everything else that she had in her sewing kit and made all this weird macabre nails, like cat nails, out of all this stuff from her sewing kits. And they catch it all the details. They even have little, like, screws going through the parts of her fingertips. That's really fantastic. And these are all plastic, they're malleable plastic, so kitties won't get hurt or you won't cut yourself or sharp yourself, but they really look realistically sharp. Very nice open palm hand. You get a, hand, a whip holding hand. Oops, sorry. You get a whip holding hand. Once again, great detail on the claws. Look at that. And the glove-like, the way they made the glove-like texture and the glove-like sculpting, fantastic. You get a relaxed hand with the claws out. It's semi-static. It's not really a relaxed relax. It's semi-static. She's getting ready to pounce. Nice. And you get the taser holding hand. Again, consistency in those claws is just phenomenal. Very nice. And speaking of the taser, you get this taser. In the movie, uh, Catwoman had a taser. And this is the taser. It's not articulated. You can't do anything with it, but it has little switches on the side. It has nice little taser electrodes on the top. The little Catwoman cat face that was on it that she put on it. And it comes with a little clip that you can clip on. That's instructed to clip on the side of her boots. A little clip right there. Nice detail on that taser. Come with a stand. The stand only has one peg in it because you only put one foot on it, and the other foot stands off of the stand, which is kind of cool when you put it on there and play around with it. Very nice, simple stand. Plastic. You get this nice whip. Now, what they did with this whip, uh, usually uh, when uh, toy companies give you whips and things, lassos and stuff like that, you usually one solid piece of plastic which can't move. Uh, NECA, the great guys at NECA put uh, this whip, has a wire running through it. Nice. And it's a nice material. It's not plastic. This is like a material on here that runs already through. Now, the handle, the kilt, the kilt of the... Uh, of the whip is plastic, also malleable a little bit, very nice, fits easily and nicely into the palm of her hand. I really don't want to show that right now because it's going to get off the camera. But the whip can extend all the way out or it can curl up into any design you want it. That's really fantastic. I loved it. But the piece of resistance of this figure is the detail and the loveliness of the sculpting of the ex ex extra head. They give you an additional head on Catwoman, which is the one that is not destroyed. And look at that detail. That is Michelle Pfeiffer under that mask. This is hot, almost Hot Toys quality that uh, NECA has been doing on their one-fourth scale figures of late. If you look at a lot of their one-fourth scale figures of late, the Deadpool and such, they're doing almost Hot Toys scale quality. I think NECA will corner the market in the one-fourth scale. Look at the eyes, the stitching. These stitches are raised, too, so you can actually rub your hand and feel them on every part of her, all the way around. 
just truly, truly great work. This was a labor of love for the guys over at NECA, you can tell. They just really took their time and they did great stuff on it. So let's take a look at the articulation on our figure. Before we look at the articulation, I just really wanted to praise one more time the head sculpts on these. As I mentioned earlier, Catwoman comes with two alternative heads. This is the head that comes stock on her. This is the additional head that comes in the packaging. We saw that a minute ago, but I just want to take a close-up on the head that comes stock on her. During the course of the movie of Batman Returns, Catwoman's clothes start to become disarrayed and damaged as she goes through her Catwoman hijinks of stealing and robbing and fighting. Uh, her, her suit is homemade, so it starts to unthread and come apart as she gets wilder and wilder and crazier and crazier and battles Batman and stuff. And near the end of the movie, her costume is pretty much destroyed like that. And they took that section of the movie and made it into the action figure. And the hair is real hair, rooted hair inside the mask. Comes out, and you can style this hair. You have to put gel on it and style it to get her out of her face. But it was not her face in the movie, different parts of her face. So it's realistic to the movie. But you see the mask is all torn and ripped. Still, Michelle Pfeiffer right there with a different expression on her face. Wonderful. And you see the rooted hair all in the back. Look at that. Really just some terrific work. All right, let's take a look at that articulation. Catwoman's head gets a full 360 swivel like that. Very nice. Can go up, up pretty much. Very good up. She's looking up at Batman coming down. Get a nice, nice, nice up. Goes down about this much. Gets down like that. But if you bend her body down, you get a nice look down. So it doesn't, it doesn't really need to go down that deep. Shoulders go up about this much and it freezes. That's about as high as you're going to get. But you don't really need that much. You get a full swivel on the, sh on the shoulders, 360. That's on both arms. There is no uh, arm cut, straight arm right there. There is a nice bend onto the elbow, goes back about that much, up to there. Nice, nice bend on the arm. There is no forearm cut other than the, the one we just saw. That forearm swivel at the elbow. We get the swivel in the wrist. Swivels up about that much. Swivels forward about that much. And of course, we just did full rotation. There's no pliabilities in the fingers. The fingers are in set position. Waist. There was a slight ab crunch, but underneath her corset, because of this rubber-like corset that she has, it, it's, it's restrictive. Because as soon as you bend, the bottom half of her breast line hits the top half of the corset, and that right immediately locks it up. So she'll go down about that far, and then you have to go up. Uh, raise up, she'll raise back. Again, restricted by the tightness of that corset, which was in the movie, on her costume. So she doesn't bend back that far. She does have waist rotation get full waist rotation. She probably can do a 360, but you, you, A, you wouldn't want her to do a 360, and B, you don't want to uh, really put a lot of stress on this corset that's, that's a separate piece rotating with you at all times. So there you go. And also it takes out the alignment of that corset because the corset doesn't move with her top half, so it looks kind of weird. Leg goes up on a ratchet about that much. And you get a little, the butt piece is down like that, but it looks weird when she's in a weird position like that, but when you put it back, it's beautiful. Look at that. When you extend it back, it goes back about that much. And the same with the right and left. There is no swivel onto the calves, but you get a nice bend at the knee. There's a slight rotation of her ankle, but not much, and an ankle pivot, which is very good, because Catwoman did a lot of squatting and jumping and leaping and landing, so those, those, those pivots in these boots are great. Now, she won't stand on her own either too well. You gotta really, really work it for her to stand, because those heels don't do it. Let me see if we can get it. 
Eh. Mm, she doesn't want to. But you can. But I tell you, it'll be risky. There she is. It will be risky because she doesn't look like she wants to stay up too well. And depending on the pose you get, it might be weird to put her in a pose. I have her in a, in a spread pose where she's squatting and moved out, kind of like a feline landing pose, so it works. I don't have to worry about her standing because she leans up, and that's why you see that little thread and thumbtack. That's part of my diorama for her that I had that I took her out of for you guys. So that's about it on her figure. Let's take an overall look at this girl. Catwoman looks fantastic. This is all plastic. All molded plastic. It looks almost like a, a like a faux wet look leather that was put on top of a body, almost like a Hot Toys real cloth um, outfit. But it's not. It's actually molded plastic that they actually painted in to look like that shiny black faux leather that she had in the movie. Look at the stitching all around her body. And as I mentioned earlier, during the course of the movie, Catwoman's costume, because of her action and because it was homemade, started falling apart during the mid to end of the movie. And this is uh, depicted of that, begin uh, that beginning of deterioration. You see these actual threads they put out here, and these threads are pretty sturdy. They won't fall out too good. They won't st string out. They just poked up to show the thread pulling on the costume, right where the stitchings are. That's really fantastic. And then we have the bodice right here, that corset that goes around. I love it. And look at that corset. That's great stitching. Nice. And the corset is done in a dull black. Excuse my thumbtack right there. That's part of my diorama that I had her on. See the lacing of the corset? That's all plastic, molded plastic, sculpted in. That's not any type of fabric. The nice shoulder blade cuts right there where she's cut. Nice. And again, we got the loose threads. Great butt. On her, they did a great sculpting on her butt. Usually, when they do a woman figure, they they kind of mess up on the the buttocks area because uh, it's just something they're not used to doing. Since we always want to collect the men, action figures are the biggest sellers. So most toy companies focus on men, and when they do the occasional woman, they don't get the figure too too feline. See, the too masculine or too or not well shaped. And they did a nice, great job in NECA getting the Michelle Pfeiffer's feline form in this cat outfit, and still allowing for that articulation to come through uh, through that butt line. That's really great on the side of her thigh. We see the back of her boot, which is really great like that. Here's the one stand she's standing on. It keeps her very steady. We see the stitching all through the knees. Again, great sculpting. You see like leather pull on her fabric, what would be if this was real fabric, the leather pull of that. And the stitching again coming loose underneath that nice painted, sculpted, and also, this is raised. This is raised. The, the distance between the black leather and her thigh, her actual thigh, is raised. It's not like somebody took a paintbrush and just painted beige on there like they do on like a Mattel figure. This is actually raised, and you feel it when you rub it on the inside of it, the in indentation that there would be a thigh underneath this material. Nicely done. And you see these are actually real posted uh, strings stitched on the opening of the stitching coming apart and then it goes back into the sculpted stitch. Fantastic. On the side you see opening of the stitch on the buttock area you see it. Really fantastic. We go down to the boot and you see that nice boot lacing. This is all molded plastic and painted. No splotchy painting, no, no uh, faded paints. The paint is really fantastically done on this, on this figure. Let's take a full 360 of it while we can. Really, 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 really very nice figure. Very nicely done. The joints are well hidden in this figure too as well. Well, guys, thank you for joining us today as we took a look at our Catwoman from the 1992 movie Batman Returns, Michelle Pfeiffer version. What do you guys think about it? Did you guys like it? Do you guys, are you guys going to get this figure? I got to tell you something. This is a fantastic figure. I, I just did, NECA really did a fantastic job on it. I cannot find any real fault with this figure. Of course, if I nitpick longer and really research stuff and uh, every iota of joint work and stuff, I probably could find something I didn't like. But overall, as a presentation of a female character, and you guys know to collect figures, female characters, for some reason, are very hard for toy uh, companies to get 100% correct. 
NECA nailed it with this guy. Right here, look at that pose. Look what she is. That's pure feline, pure Catwoman, pure 1992 Batman Returns. I love it. Um, this figure is going to cost you anywhere from $100, maybe $110. Tip for you guys that live in Southern California. I got mine brand new in the box, mint condition from Frankensons. Look them up. Frankensons, the, the toy warehouse for $80 out the door. No tax, no nothing. 80 bucks. That was a fantastic, uh, but you got to pay cash. That was a fantastic thing. I love it. Um, this is just a good, a good, good deal with her. Look at the look at the pose she is. Easy posing. I have her on the stand, and one leg is off the stand, and she's standing all by herself. Fantastic. I love it. Should you get it? Oops, you get ready to fall. I just spoke your praises. Don't fall down, honey. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. Should you get her? Hmm. I'll tell you. Yes, without a doubt. If you guys collect Batman, all you guys out there that collect all things Batman, all different villains of the Batman, all different variations of the Batman, definitely you got to pick this girl up. She is fantastic. She is the only existing Michelle Pfeiffer action figure that looks like Michelle Pfeiffer that we've had so far. She also is uh, a nice size presentation. She's a conversation starter in your collection. When you, when you walk into your room in your collection, you see her, she is something that you want to have that somebody will say, wow, look at that. Um, and she's also, you guys that collect from movie Batman, she's a collection piece of the movie history of 1992 Batman Returns movie, which was a hit movie and a milestone because the first appearance of Catwoman in a major motion picture, uh, not counting in a 1966 movie. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, there's a little section on her boot where you can clip that taser right in there. It's a little slit on this, on this left boot that allows you to clip the taser right on top so it hangs right in there like that. Very nice. Yeah, this, this is an all check in all the boxes. Yes, this is a win for me. You guys want it? You guys going to get it? Tell me, let me know what you think. Is it too tall for your collection? Should NECA continue in the one-fourth, 19-inch scale collection? Is that, does that turn you off? Or do you guys love that? Does it make your collection pop and stand out? Let me know. Write down below, because I always get back to you. You know that. I thank you guys so much for writing to us and for checking in. Hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe. We're on our way to over 2,000 subscribers. Subscribers, that is fantastic. I thank you as always from the bottom of my heart. And remember, guys, playing with toys, even a one-fourth scale 19-inch Michelle Pfeiffer lookalike from the hit movie Batman Returns 1992 from NECA can be as fun as a barrel of monkeys. But respect the monkey. Play nice. Take care, guys.